Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react. You may have heard this before and may have just seemed like a little dose of motivation, but this has actually been researched by a professor of psychology and it turned out to be true. 90% of our happiness is not based on what is happening in the world, but how we see the world. If you gathered information on hundreds of people, including income, marital status, health, and so on, you could really only predict 10% of their happiness. I'm sure you could think of some extremes that come as an exception, but this is overall the reason why you hear about depressed millionaires and very happy people who have much, much less. Now this might not be totally helpful to you, but it's something to think about. However, this video will be more about tangible things you can do to increase happiness, which are discussed in the happiness equation, which I'll be going over. So let's get into it. First, let's just real quick cover seven ways you can be happy right now. These are not just fun little ideas, but methods proven by psychologists to work. Do these for a few weeks and you will feel happier. The first is three walks. Walk for 30 minutes three times a week. This small amount of exercise has been proven to increase happiness. I've said before how exercise is crucial for increasing so many aspects of your life, but you don't need to be an Olympic athlete. Three walks will be enough to help. Second is the 20 minute replay. This is where you write for 20 minutes about a positive experience. Reliving the experience as you write and read it improves your happiness. They had couples do this, and they found that those couples were more likely to last. Third is random acts of kindness. Doing little things like paying for someone's meal or writing a card to someone who isn't expecting it have proven to increase happiness. Fourth is a complete unplug and turning off your phone or getting off the computer for some period of time, like maybe from dinner time until you go to bed so you can recharge for the next day. Fifth, the author called hit flow, as in dive deep into what you need to be doing, become absorbed and you'll be amazed at how much time flies. Sixth is two minute meditations, which is pretty self-explanatory. Meditating for just a few minutes per day actually causes parts of your brain to grow associated with things like self-awareness while shrinking parts dealing with stress. And last is five gratitudes, where you write down a few things you are grateful for from the past week. There are more things to come, but these are seven things you can do to get started on increasing happiness right now. Remember, you can learn a lot of things like playing an instrument and playing a sport, but you can also learn how to be happy. Now maybe you aren't going to do any of these, so let's talk about your typical day and things you can change just a little bit. You can put every decision you make into four categories in terms of time and importance. Time could be low or high, and importance could be low or high. All the decisions you make fall in here, and there's a strategic way to handle all of them. Low time and importance is like buying groceries, paying bills, and more. These are the things that you automate. This means do whatever you can to have them done for you. Set up auto pay for your bills, set a workout schedule and put it into your phone or calendar so you don't have to think about it when you get to the gym. Use online resources to have toiletries delivered to your house if you can, and so on. The less your brain spends thinking about these things, the more time it has to focus on other things. Then high importance and low time is like eating dinner with family, picking up an important prescription from the store, picking a subject for your English paper, and more. The author puts effectuate here. This just means get it done. Don't think about it, you should schedule it and do it. It's not supposed to take too long and it is important to do, so just get it off your list. High time and low importance is like scheduling your week and filling out a to-do list, checking emails from coworkers that you should respond to, cleaning your really messy room, and so on. These you regulate. Regulate is where you make rules and follow them. Set a time every morning where you check your email. Have a calendar with certain colors representing different things. Set aside two hours to do chores with no interruption, and so on. Give yourself rules like I have to do this at this time in this way and don't break them. And last, high time and high importance is like applying for a job, studying for the MCAT or some crucial exam to get you into the school you want, choosing a new house for you and your family, and so on. For this, you debate. For these, you talk to friends, make lists of why you should or should not make the decision. Actually take time to make the decision and don't rush into it. These are the things that really matter. Whatever choices you make on a given day, decide where they belong in these boxes and what you will do to make every decision easier but also better. As a real life example, to someone like Mark Zuckerberg, fashion comes as low importance and low time for him, which is why you pretty much always see him in the same type of gray shirt. Like the author advises, he basically automates this by buying a ton of the same shirt and just having them ready to go. He and many others have done this because it allows them to spend less time on small things like picking an outfit and more time thinking about their business and what matters to them. Something to remember is we make faster decisions when we have less options. 
Ironically, there have been businesses that sold many kinds of something, like every type of fish you could think of. But when they removed a lot of the things from the menu, forcing people to pick between just a few options, their sales shot up. You wouldn't think this is true, but time and time again has told us that it is. So maybe you should automate how you pick out your clothes. Or if that's not for you, maybe make yourself go to the gym first thing in the morning. Give yourself no choice, you have to do it, or else you might just talk yourself out of it by the end of the day. Additionally, as time available goes up, the effort you put in goes down. We can all relate to this. A project due in two months, you probably don't even start, or maybe just sort of begin after it's assigned. But when you have waited till the last minute, your effort goes way up and you're forced to dive into the project. So what can you do about this? Well, you can cleverly create your own sort of last minute panic. Don't procrastinate everything because that's going to cause stress, but tell yourself you have to finish something tonight or tomorrow, even if it's not due yet. Then once you do, you're allowed to do whatever you want to do, like go to that party or relax with friends. Moving on, the people living on the island of Okinawa have a longer life expectancy and more people living over 100 years old than almost anywhere else in the world. Studies have shown that they eat smaller portions of food and stop before they're completely full. But they also are much different in terms of lifestyle compared to many of us in the West. They don't have retirement in Okinawa. In fact, they don't even have a word for it. They do have a word that goes by ikigai, which translates to a reason for living. Think of it as what drives you. A lot of people are just waiting for retirement, but the people of this island don't retire because they find a strong reason to get up and do something with their day. Something they found through tests is that people with a strong reason to get up in the morning were more likely to be educated and employed and have lower levels of stress, plus they also lived much longer. If you don't have this, that's okay, but it's something to look for, because when you have it, it'll guide many of your decisions and keep you motivated. One of my favorite quotes from this book was actually just the author quoting Dale Carnegie, where he says, Are you bored with life? Then throw yourself into some work you believe in with all your heart, live for it, die for it, and you will find happiness that you had thought could never be yours. No matter who you are, you have 168 hours in the week. This can be broken up into three 56-hour buckets. If you sleep 8 hours per day, that's one bucket complete. Then maybe you work 40 hours per week, plus driving to and from work or any working from home, you can add that up to 56 hours of work per week as well. That means you have 56 hours per week for you, and that's your third bucket. How you use those hours is up to you. Your buckets might not be exactly like this, of course, but break it down and you can find time. So to end this, remember, you can learn to be happy just like you can learn any other skill. If you want an immediate boost in happiness, there are seven proven ways to do so. Looking at the decisions you make and figuring out where they are on the time versus importance scale can help you become less stressed with those decisions while also making better ones. And every day be looking for or at least remembering what gets you up in the morning. Pursue that and your happiness will increase more than you can probably imagine. And lastly, you've probably seen the five biggest regrets of those who are dying, but I'm going to leave them here because it's always a good reminder. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.